Hello everyone, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday and today's topic is point and shoot camera in the future. So why do we have point and shoot camera when we have DSLR, mirrorless and hybrid cameras? You have to understand this. Uh, idea of point and shoot camera is very simple. It's a multi-purpose tool and it operates in much wider range like if you buy a DSLR for instance even a simple basic DSLR you can only get a lens that will barely give you 3x of uh, operational range if you want 10x zoom lenses for DSLR they are quite expensive and heavy so a point and shoot camera generally can operate in much larger areas so for that reason we are quite gravitating towards it and it's cheap like at the end of the day like nobody is gonna buy a camera that they cannot afford so cost plays a very significant role so there is a cost there is the fact that it's a multi-purpose tool it can it's not great at anything but it can take care of many things at once and it operates in much wider range so there are many categories of these sort of cameras and some of the successful categories i want to bring in front of you one we have is waterproof and rugged camera now, many mobile cameras do come with the fact that uh, you can submerge them, but suffice to say, they do not guarantee you on that. And uh, if water seeps into it, which you cannot see, it's gonna corrupt the system. Uh, in this scenario, where you can buy, uh, you know, a waterproof and rugged camera, you don't have to worry about that. And even if water seeps in, your all you're gonna lose is your photos, and that's also not gonna most likely gonna happen because memory card can survive being submerged. So. And camera uh, mobiles that can handle like you know that are waterproof are surprisingly expensive and not to mention if you lose your mobile phone you'll not only lose photographs you lose almost everything so you cannot risk losing your mobile phone however you can risk losing a point and shoot camera and you even if let's say your camera breaks all you can uh, all you have to do is remove the SD card and most in most scenario it will work so let's say you go to water park a lot and it's kind of hot environment where you live or you were for swimming and all that it's the best for that and it's great for kids like if you want to give kids something uh, like you want to get them started in photography this sort of camera is quite good not only because it can handle water but it also is far more resistant to you know drop damage than any other system including mobile phones so when you have this you have a bit of uh, you know peace of mind and you might say, okay, I can teach my kids with, uh, you know, photography with uh, mobile phone, but nobody takes mobile phone seriously. Like there is a psychological barrier to it. Like even if your mobile camera has better photographic quality, nobody takes seriously. Like if you put somewhere, can I take your photo from mobile versus can I take your photo with a camera? There's a night and day difference. It's a psychological difference. And sometimes they do have better cameras. So waterproof and rugged cameras are not going anywhere. And we're gonna be seeing them for a while. Then we come to the most fun camera in the series, that's ultra zoom camera. Basically any camera that exceeds 20x zoom. Now the X I'm saying here is very simple. Is the lowest number of millimeter, like let's say 50 millimeter uh, versus the biggest millimeter number, let's say 500 millimeter. That way you divide that and you get the X value. So it's a very fun camera to use. Like there is an inherent fun to it. Like you go in, you know, outdoor trip and all that, and you can just zoom in to see into things. It's fun. Like there is no equivalent of it. And you might say, okay, I can get a telephoto lens in DSLR. Uh, no, nothing that can even compete with these things. Nothing like flat out. The lenses you need is like 1400. And this is Nikon Coolpix uh, P1000. It goes to F, um, pardon me. Uh, 3000 millimeter yeah there is no DSLR lens that can go that far of course the quality is not like you know telescope grade quality however but it's fun like if you see how uh, a, there is an older version of this P900 you can zoom into the moon itself and it's surprisingly large amount of fun and it's very good for zoo like in like people have this old idea oh, just get a prime lens and you know walk close to are you gonna walk close to a freaking tiger or lion so for wildlife, this, you know, serves a very unique and interesting function. It's very, very fun to use. Like you have to use it once and you'll be like, you will not go back, suffice to say. Then we come up to star of the show, the prosumer cameras. Now prosumer cameras is like uh, becoming a bigger and bigger thing because a lot of uh, sensor technology has uh, progressed and uh, what does has 
allowed us to do is very simple it's like now instead of having very tiny sensor that is more or less same size as mobile cameras eh? we put one inch sensor sometimes full APS-C sensor or even full frame sensor into a point and shoot body like this things that I'm saying this and this has one inch sensor this has APS-C sensor so getting a bigger sensor directly improves your image quality provided if you have the same lens quality like unless you put shitty lens uh, you know in big sensor versus a very great lens in a small sensor they can't counteract it so i'm assuming the lens is the same so they are very good close if not better than dslr the reason for that is simply your dslr you're not going to carry everywhere so the portability of these things helps a lot like there is no point of, oh i have canon uh, 5d in my home it's in your home not with you so for this reason the portability aspect it's playing a very crucial role nowadays this is sony rx uh, 100 mark 6 and they give full manual control like this is very crucial for any student or anybody who wants to learn photography like point and shoot camera have every single function that dslr has it's just they don't allow you to control it you cannot set the shutter speed you cannot set the aperture you cannot set the basically uh, almost every camera in wilderness it was flat out useless because like flat out only thing they give you is auto mode and everything else was like you know they only let you control one aspect they will not let you control all the at least three aspects of the photography at the same time so these cameras from day one they were focusing on giving you a professional experience so they have full manual control large sensors and generally they also come with better lenses now what i mean by better lenses generally you will get a bit brighter lens as in they will have better f-stop and sometimes they will have good optics as in like low chromatic aberration and things like that so prosumer cameras are uh, becoming more and more popular and i think we're gonna see them a lot in upcoming future so what does the future hold of it as you can see in the title is uh, camera for 2020 so i think uh, right now the biggest hurdle for many people to jumping into camera is that their touch screen integration is kind of pointless like bad i'm using canon 800d which is ki kind of good but let's just say it will uh, you know leaves a lot to be desired second full manual control in point and shoot cameras are still a, like you know far flung dream like they can do it is just a software function but they are not doing it because they want to sell their you know higher end camera for some reason and wireless integration this really needs to improve otherwise i don't think uh, you know point and shoot camera will last very long like as you can see this uh, coolpix w300 has wi-fi gps and bluetooth however uh, we we are at a stage where we can put sim card into this and have a 4g data for that now you might be like why, why would you want to do that imagine this like you are using this camera you take your photos while you are charging the camera like uh, some of these cameras can be charged while you are uh, you know plugging it like normally you don't have to like take the battery or put it in a battery uh, cradle so while you plug in it activates the 4g uploads all your photo to whatever you say google drive or wherever you think and you get an instant backup whenever you are charging so suffice to say uh, the wireless integration needs to be better and even right now nikon's uh, wi-fi app is like let's just say it it's very frustrating to deal with and raw editing on camera should be possible now like right now as we speak camera processors have enough processing power that they can handle an app now for instance your android phone now can handle it which sometimes even a cheap in android phone can handle i don't expect it to be like full in depth as uh, in depth you can go in lightroom but exposure white balance and basic things should be feasible to do and better battery like everything is meaningless if your battery is shit now to Sony's credit, they are listening to their customer. This is like Sony A7 Mark II battery and that is Mark III battery. So they are learning that, you know, people need big battery. There is no point of having a like epic camera which battery runs out every few minutes. So this is my prediction of the future. Hopefully, uh, camera manufacturers will, uh, you know, provide us with good products. And this is my presentation on point and shoot camera i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't no worry you can dislike it and leave a comment what would you want to see in camera tuesday and subscribe press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching